Styrofoam is a plastic compound that's used extensively in industry and can also be found in countless consumer products. The extensive use of styrofoam comes down to the fact that it's really cheap, extremely lightweight, a pretty good insulator, and decently durable. These properties are due to the fact that styrofoam is about 95% air and the 5% solid material is a chemical called polystyrene. Polystyrene is a plastic polymer that's soluble in acetone, and since styrofoam is mostly air, you can dissolve a pretty massive amount of styrofoam in a very small amount of acetone. This process releases all of the air that's trapped in the styrofoam, and when you allow the acetone to evaporate, you're left with a solid piece of plastic. Today I'm doing this for science, but as a rule of thumb I do this with all of my styrofoam waste as it limits the amount of landfill space this stuff takes up by 95%, which is huge. This also makes it a lot harder for polystyrene to break down into microplastics, which inevitably find their way into our environment and our food chain. This is really important because styrofoam makes up a shocking percentage of the space in landfills and is almost never recycled. When polystyrene is recycled, the only real viable route is by thermal depolymerization to its monomer, styrene. Styrene can then be upcycled back into polystyrene, or it can be made into countless other chemicals, which is what I'm going to demonstrate today. Now, the first step of this process I've already shown, which is to dissolve styrofoam in acetone, let the acetone evaporate away so you're left with a much smaller volume of plastic to work with. This larger piece of plastic is then painstakingly broken apart into smaller pieces that'll actually fit into my boiling flask. For this, I'm using a 500 milliliter boiling flask because I only have a 500 milliliter heating mantle and I fill it about two thirds of the way up. I then set this up for a basic distillation with a twist, which I'm not sure is entirely necessary. The twist is that I fed the exhaust into a cold finger filled with activated carbon. The idea here is that when polystyrene thermally decomposes, it produces a lot of toxic carcinogenic byproducts, and I figured the activated carbon could maybe absorb some of those. The reason I say it might not be necessary is that I didn't really notice any gas exhaust at all, but this might be different for everyone. Anyway, the heating mantle is cranked onto max, which in my case is about 340 degrees Celsius, and that quickly melts the polystyrene. It then begins to break down and give off an extremely dense white gas, which condenses into a translucent yellow liquid and drips into my collection flask. What's happening here is that when polystyrene is heated to a sufficient temperature, it begins to break down into its monomer, styrene, as well as a few other side products. This is because polystyrene is essentially just a really, really long chain of styrene molecules, and when polystyrene is heated sufficiently, these bonds holding the styrene molecules together will break and reduce styrene back to its liquid form. In researching for this video, I looked into a few potential green alternatives to thermal depolymerization, but it seems like unfortunately Unfortunately, this is the only method that's really feasible at scale. The reason I say unfortunate is because of the extremely toxic byproducts I mentioned earlier and because this process can never be made to be 100% efficient. With that in mind, and due to the massive environmental toxicity of polystyrene and styrene, the only real option is to sort of ban it from consumer use, which is unfortunate, but I digress. Anyway, this distillation is carried out for about 35 minutes until no more liquid styrene is coming over into my collection flask. At that point, all that's left in my boiling flask is a layer of thick black tar, which is toxic waste. This stuff can be easily cleaned out of your flask using acetone and properly disposed of. And if purity is not a problem, you can pretty much be done here. For my purposes, however, purity is important, so the final step is to remove those toxic byproducts I talked about earlier. To do this, I'm simply going to carry out a second distillation of my crude styrene, which is a distinct orange color for some reason. As a side note, it's a similar color to the crude benzene from last month, and at the time I chalked that up to iron impurities, but now I'm thinking it might be some weird decomposition products. Anyway, I set this up with a thermometer and crank my heating mantle back up to maximum, and I get my first couple drops of distillate around 80 degrees Celsius. This temperature doesn't really make sense for any of the primary byproducts of the thermal depolymerization of polystyrene, so I think what it is is some acetone that didn't fully evaporate. The next thing to distill over would be any potential water at around 100 degrees Celsius, and then ethyl benzene at around 136 degrees Celsius. 
Styrene distills over next at 145 degrees Celsius, and when my thermometer reads that temperature, I switch this waste beaker out for a collection flask. Since the majority of my product from earlier was styrene, this temperature is held for a long time and I collect a lot of distillate. Eventually though, the thermometer begins to creep up and when it exceeds 150 degrees Celsius, I remove my collection flask and replace the waste beaker. This is important because at around 164 degrees Celsius, the next waste product, alpha methyl styrene, will begin to distill over, and you don't want that. And now at this point, I'm finally done and I'm left with a pretty good yield of mostly pure styrene. I have no idea how to calculate a percent yield on this, so I'm not gonna try, but when I do store this, I wanna store it in a brown glass bottle and in a cool, dark place. This is important because pure styrene can auto-polymerize back into polystyrene, and when it does so, it does it very exothermically, which can be very dangerous. There are inhibitors that can prevent this, but I don't have any and I plan to use this stuff pretty much immediately so I don't bother. In any case, I hope you found this interesting, or at least informative, and I want to take a moment to thank my patrons, which I want to start doing more consistently at the end of my videos. I meant to start doing this sooner, but I only really have two patrons, and putting them up here at the end felt like the credits at the end of a Neil Breen movie. I don't think there's any utility in continuing to wait though, and I do want to sincerely thank my two patrons because your support is really, really valuable to keeping this channel going. I've also finally gotten around to adding a few perks to my Patreon, including one-on-one -on -one messaging, uh, video requests, and a couple other things I can't think of off the top of my head. Regardless though, if that sounds interesting to you, consider becoming a patron, and if you can't do that, subscribe and follow for more.